Okay, so what I'd like to do in this section is just go into a bit more detail about the Arturia Keylab Mark II. Uh, the reason I want to do this is because I've never been so infused about a piece of hardware and more importantly, the brilliant software that comes with it as well. Um, I've already mentioned that the build quality of this is absolutely first class. It's an all metal construction. It's really heavy. It's got these lovely wooden side panels. Um, all the buttons and pan pots and sliders, they've just all got a beautiful tactile feel. Um, if you're a gig in synth player, you could put one of these in a flight case, grab your laptop and go off to a gig and with the thousands of amazing synthesizer sounds with the software that comes with it, you're just ready to go. Uh, but in the home recording studio as a MIDI keyboard controller, it's also brilliant because you've got all the drum pads here and all the controls you need. You've got your door setting, your analog lab setting, your user settings, you've got everything on it. It's a very fully featured synthesizer slash MIDI keyboard controller. It's actually two things in one. Um, now, if you've had little or even no formal musical training whatsoever, if you've got a synth like this, it will make you a sonic wizard. I'm gonna show you later how you can basically come up with a few tunes quite easily on this just by playing around with some of the amazing presets. Okay, so first what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna jump onto the Arturia website because there's a few things I wanna show you that are quite relevant and then I'll come back and I'll give you a demonstration and I'll play a few things from the 80s and a few more recent things just to give you an idea of some of the brilliant sounds that this has. So, okay, first things first, let's jump onto the Arturia website and I'll just show you a couple of things. So check this out. Okay, so what I'm gonna show you first, if I just click on the products tab here and then click on controllers. Um, so these are the controllers that Arturia do now. Um, don't get the Keylab Mark II mixed up with the Keylab Essential. The Keylab Essentials are Arturia's more budget range. They're still very good, but not to be confused with the more professional Keylab Mark II models, which come in 88 key, as you can see here. And if I scroll down, there's also a Keylab Mark II 61 key. And the one I have, of course, is this 49 key version. So I'm just gonna click on this for a minute um, because there's something really cool that I wanna show you here. Okay, so you can see how much the keyboard um, costs, this MIDI keyboard controller. Uh, but what's great is these three pieces of software that you get free with it. Um, now, Ableton Live Lite, I'm not going to bother going into that. Um, to me, that's kind of irrelevant. We all know what that is. That's not a big deal. But what is a big deal is the Piano 5 software and more importantly, the Analog Lab. This is an incredible piece of software. Now, you get all three of these free when you buy this MIDI keyboard controller. Now, Analog Lab, I'm just gonna actually hop on over to here uh, because normally you would have to buy this. So if you owned um, a different MIDI keyboard controller from somebody else, you can still use this, uh, but it costs 199 euros. Now you actually get it free when you buy this keyboard. And on top of that, you also get the Piano 5 software as well. And again, if I come over here and click on this, um, it will just pop up in a second. As you can see, this is 249 euros just for that. So if you add this with um, the Analog Lab 5, you're getting 450 euros worth of software, uh, which means you're basically getting the keyboard free or you're getting the software free, depending on which way you want to look at it. Now, when you buy the keyboard, you just come on over to the Arturia website, you register it and then you can download a few bits and bobs. The first thing I would recommend downloading is the Arturia Software Center software. Now I'm just gonna open mine up here quickly just to show you what this is. Um, Arturia Software Center. Um, the first time you open this, you'll just put in your username and email and then it will automatically log you in every time. And here it will show you what products you have. And as you can see, I've got the Keylab 49 Mark II. Uh, there's also four synthesizer packages here that I've actually got as well. This is because I've got the full versions. I've got the Roland Jupiter 8, the Roland um, Juno 6, the Yamaha CS80 and the Hammond B3. Um, if any of these ever need any updates in the future, you'll do them here. You'll just click on updates and it will show you anything that needs updating. So that is the first thing that you would download. And then of course you can download the amazing Analog Lab 5 and any instruction manuals as well. That is all on this page. Okay, so let me just quit this and open up Arturia's Analog Lab 5. Here we go. So I can just give you a quick run through of this and, um, and I'll get onto a few demonstrations as well. 
So um, first thing I'm going to do is just change the window size. I'm just going to sort of make it a little bit bigger so it's nice and easy to see. Um, you can change the window size, so make it as big or as small as you like. So, okay, so this is the main interface of what Analog 5 looks like. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click show all here just so I can show you all the amazing vintage synthesizers and um, electronic keyboards from yesteryear that this um, software package has. So you've got here the Hammond B3 and if I click on the audio demo button here <laughs> It will give you a little brief demonstration as to the sound. Um, we've got the famous Yamaha CS80 here. Um, we have the Roland Jupiter 8. Um, let me just have a little, the, the um, Oberheim OBX. The Profit 5. So we've got some incredible vintage synthesizers here. Now um, I just want to actually point out at this stage that what Arturia did, these aren't just regular software models of vintage synthesizers and um, electronic pianos. What Arturia did, they actually sourced and got their hands on the actual physical versions of these and sometimes more than one sometimes two or even three uh, because you know something like a Yamaha CS80 or a Roland Jupiter 8 they all varied so you could actually put three Roland Jupiter 8s in a room and even if they're all tuned up and yes um, the Jupiter 8 and the Yamaha CS80 many of these did need tuning on a note by note basis and some of them were an absolute nightmare to keep maintained as well um, the Oberheim, for example, some of the classic Oberheim models from back in the day were notoriously unreliable. Um, the Yamaha CS80, you ask anybody that owns one of these today and they'll tell you that it is a constant maintenance job. You're constantly having to keep them maintained and tuned. So what Arturia did, they got their hands on, um, on a couple of these, each individual synthesizer, like two or three of each, and um, got the average sound from all of them. Now what they did, they basically took every circuit board, every diode, every chip, every processor, and it was all analysed, stripped down, computerised, so that they could get the best model possible. So, for example, if I just go here for a second and open up the um, Roland Jupiter 8, for example. Let me just hide this one for a second. I'm just going to come up here and change the window size, just make this nice a little bit bigger here. Um, again, you've got all these incredible settings and adjustments and parameters that you can change. Um, you've got all the stuff that the original would have had for making all kinds of changes, absolutely everything. And honestly, if somebody stuck a gun to my head, I would say I just cannot tell the difference in sound between this software version and the original. I've actually played one of these um, Roland Jupiter 8s back in the day. And not only can I remember exactly how it sounded, but I can also remember the smell because, you know, when they'd been turned on for quite a long time, you get that kind of electrical circuit board smell. Um, but the sounds of these are absolutely amazing. So let me just come back to uh, the analog lab and carry on going through here for a minute. Um, and also just to point out things like the Yamaha CS80, Yamaha only made about 3000 of these in the late 70s. They're very hard to get hold of. And even if you can find one, they cost anywhere between 15 and 20,000 pound. A Roland Jupiter 8 second hand go for anywhere between about 12 and 18,000 pound. Why anybody would want to spend sort of 15 to 20 grand on a 40 year old analog synthesizer uh, that needs tuning and constant maintenance is beyond me when you've got a software version here that sounds just as good. Honestly, you've got to hear these things to believe them. Um, I'm just going to actually click on this just to give you an example. So basically, with the Analog Lab 5 software that comes free with the Arturia Keylab Mark II keyboard, you get thousands upon thousands of presets. So if I just go to Explore here, this is all the presets that sound designers have actually come up with. As you can see, there's just so many of them. There's thousands of them in here. I haven't actually been through and counted them, but there's a lot. Um, 
the sound designers at Archeria, they're absolutely superb. So the chances are that if you want a really good Jupiter 8 sound or a Profit 5 sound, if I just sort of click on the Profit 5, for example, here, you've got all these presets already. If I just sort of play a couple. <laughs> So, you know, that's just on the Profit 5. You can see that there's just so many presets. Now, sometimes it's just good. I love presets because sometimes you don't want to actually go in and, um, you know, if I just sort of go back to the Yamaha, for example, up here at the top, um, I've actually got the full version of this software. So basically, when I open this, I can actually click open and it will actually open up the CS80 software and I can go in here and make all kinds of changes to everything that I want. I can I'll do pretty much anything in here. Um, but sometimes you don't want to do that. Some, I mean, yes, you can. If you buy the full version of this plugin, then you can go in and you can customize and come up with your own unique sounds. And then you can actually save them uh, to your own banks and presets and stuff like that. Whereas if you don't buy the actual plugin, for example, let me just go to the Profit 5 again because I don't actually own this one. If I try to open this one, it will just tell me that I've got to go and buy it. So, um, but that doesn't matter because with this Analog Lab 5 software, just look at how many presets that you've got in here. There's just so many. <laughs> So again, you might be happy with just the presets. I know I am for most of the time, because to be honest, there's just so many, there's hundreds. If I go into the Hammond, the B3, if you're a Hammond um, organ fan, then again, just look at how many presets you've got here for this that have been put together. Here's a few notes. <laughs> Now again, I actually have the full version of this software so I can actually open it and I can go in here and I can start sort of uh, pulling in draw bars and uh, adjusting all sorts of things. Um, there's a whole ton of parameters and all kinds of things that you can actually adjust and set up in here. Uh, but again, just sticking with the Analog Lab 5, I think that this has everything that most people will ever need when it comes to presets. Let me just sort of jump into another one here. Um, let me just come up here to, uh, all right, Yamaha DX7. Classic um, synthesizer, if you're a Genesis fan, late 70s, early 80s, there's loads and loads and loads of presets in this. <laughs> So again, I think most people will be happy with all these presets because there are just absolutely hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. Okay, so just quickly before we start having some fun and I start playing some bits and pieces for you, I'm just gonna quickly show Logic users how to basically set the Archeria keyboard up so it works seamlessly in Logic. This is really quick and easy. If you're a Logic user, you just simply go to Logic, Control Surfaces, Setup, and in here, you basically click New and Install. And what you're looking for is this one here. You're looking for Mackie Designs, and the model is Mackie Control, and the module is Logic Control. And then you just simply click Add. I'm not going to do that because I've already added it. And once you've done that, you just simply select it here. And the only two things you're going to change is this output port and input port. You just make sure that they are both selected to Keylab Mark II 49 door for both of them. Or if you've got the 88 note version, then again, you just select it here. So they're the only two things you're going to change and then you're set and ready to go. So uh, let me just play you this a second. So if I just solo this bit, as you can see down here, I've actually got the Analog Lab 5 set as a plugin. So if I just quickly click on this and open it, it will open it up and you can see here that I've actually got the Roland Jupiter 8 as a synth sound for 
this track. So that's how you use the Analog Lab as a plugin within Logic. So let me just quit this. Okay, so what I want to show you now is um, I'm just going to play a couple of bits and pieces just so you can hear some of the amazing sounds. Um, I've got a few in here that I've liked, uh, which I'll go through in a second, and I've also got a couple of saved presets that I actually made myself. So uh, just starting with this top one, um, if you're a Genesis fan, um, I think Banks used one of these, a DX7 with Genesis back in the day, you have this lovely sound. <laughs> Um, let me just have a look at what we got here. Baseline. Um, again, earlier on when I said that you can use some of these amazing presets to inspire you into uh, songwriting for coming up with ideas, this is exactly the kind of thing that I meant because you can just go through some of these incredible arpeggiated sounds, these big fat sounds, and just play around with notes. So even, even if you've had no musical training whatsoever, this is a great way to get inspired. Just things like that, for example. Um, what else do we have here? Another big sound. This one, Classic Roland. Um, and then we have, uh, we have these incredible pianos as well on here. And again, you can actually open this one up because you actually get this free with the keyboard. And then in here, you can change all kinds of parameters. Uh, room reverb. microphone position, all kinds of things that you can change in here. Let me just play you something on this so you can hear how this sounds. or something a little bit bigger and grander. That kind of thing. Okay, coming back, we have um, this kind of pad sound as well. Or going back to piano for a more modern kind of sound. Let me just change some. Again, if I open this piano up, you can change all kinds of things in here. So uh, you can play more modern kind of stuff like this. Okay, what else do we have here? Okay, jazz organ. Let me just bring up the controls and keys and make a little adjustment here. Maybe bring the bass up a tad and the mid up a little bit. 
bring that timing down. Okay, if you're a Deep Purple fan from the 70s, you like John Lord, you can do this kind of stuff. Sticking with Deep Purple theme for a minute, let me just sort of bring up another organ here. This is something a bit more gritty. Let me um, make a couple of little adjustments here. Bring up the distortion. To about there. So then you can play this kind of stuff. Let me just run through a couple of others that I've got here. Um, on the run, this is modelled after the famous Pink Floyd song. So if I just increase the movement, and then if I play an E flat and a B flat, we'll have the actual genuine Pink Floyd song. For example, um, okay, just beat it. If you're a Michael Jackson fan, you'll recognize this one taken off this famous keyboard here. The introduction to beat it, really, really easy. Anybody can play this, even if you've had no musical training whatsoever. Let me just crank the master up a little bit. It goes like this. <laughs> Again, really, really easy. Um, okay, next jump, because of Van Halen. Um, let me just adjust this a little bit. Again, that's all based on the famous Oberheim synthesizer, and that's what Van Halen used for that original track, hence the name. Um, okay, what else do we have here that I can show you? Um, obey the computer. Again, this is just another great one that will inspire you to come up with ideas for, uh, for melodies and riffs. Um, let me see if I can come up with something here. Just that kind of thing, it's just really easy to just come up with, you know, really creative ideas with some of these incredible sounds. I've got a couple of saved presets here because I wanted to show you the um, split keyboard. So you can actually split the keyboard any way you want and down at the bottom you can see here that I've got it split from C. And coming down I just have... So um, I'm just going to play you something, 96 Tears. It was written originally by a band called Question Mark and the Mysterians. I think the Stranglers covered it in the 80s, uh, but it goes something like this. Thank you. 
Um, okay, something a little bit more modern. The weekend, blinding lights. Again, I did a split keyboard, so from middle C up I have. And for the left I have this bass sound. You'll recognize this. And when I add the bass, Okay, moving on, I've got this um, Duran Duran Save a Prayer. Now I'm just going to open up the Jupiter because I actually programmed quite a lot of things. I made quite a lot of alterations in here to get this sound. Uh, the delayed time, for example. I'm changing this from binary to dotted and just in the wet and dry mix. Um, I also adjusted a few things in here with the um, wave. And various bits and pieces. So I did that so um, we can have... Anybody that's my age will remember that Duran Duran song from the 1980s, quite a famous um, synthesizer riff. Nick Rose of Duran Duran was a massive fan of the Jupiter 8. I think it was his go-to keyboard. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I hope that's given you a good idea of some of the amazing sounds that you can get out of this brilliant MIDI keyboard controller slash synthesizer. Um, I highly recommend this and it's just so inspiring and it really will just turn you into a sonic wizard. You can come up with all kinds of things. It will inspire you because the possibilities are absolutely endless.